Now, politically, <laughs> if we analyze the current situation, it is very clear where we are. We're in a very difficult time in Kenya. A time of uncertainty. Yeah, a time of uh, a lot of financial difficulties. The real estate market is on its knees. People are not buying houses. Real estate developers, whom only yesterday were laughing all the way to the bank, are now being auctioned and going out of business. Whole estates, whole developments built, very many units, are completely empty. And there are no buyers in sight. Yeah, people are complaining there's no money. And experts are telling us, mambo bado. There is the current ongoing fight against corruption. And whatever people want to say about it, Kenyans are very skeptical. There are very many people in Kenya, right now as we speak, who no longer sleep at night. They can't get any sleep. Why? Because they are picturing themselves, yeah, being on the front page of all the local newspapers in handcuffs. Being charged in a court of law for what they have done, the corruption they have been involved in. And that's not all. All kinds of very strange things are happening. I think most of you have seen a tweet by the former sports and culture CS, Bonai Chesa. The tweet claims that a Chesa has been blocked yeah, by a person who previously supported him to the hilt, yeah, the deputy president, so that he can no longer reach him, either by phone, text message, whatever. <laughs> now, this should hardly be surprising. Yeah, and in fact should be a lesson for very many Kenyans who want to go all out for quick money. Yeah, and especially for what I would term, what I keep on calling on this channel, as political rookies. People who get very excited and jump before they think. The advice of an old man, now long gone, yeah, the late William Olintimama, is very appropriate and very relevant. If Bonachesa had followed that advice, you know Lintimama used to tell people, you should lie low like an envelope. Kama Bonachesa angetuliza boli, yeah, if he had just lied low and done his job and kept out of politics, he'd still have his job. Now he's out of a job and uh, his old master doesn't take his calls anymore. <laughs> it's called the tissue paper syndrome. Yeah. Tissue paper is very important. Indeed, it is very valuable when you enter a toilet. But after you've finished your business, how do you treat the toilet paper? <laughs> you look at it with disgust in your eyes and you flush it down the toilet violently. My apologies for that very graphic uh, example, but I just want to make sure you get the point that the tissue paper syndrome is very much in play right now. And going forward, we should expect to see more and more of it. Anyway, the long and short of what I'm trying to say is that the nation called Kenya has just now gone into labor. Yeah, if, ever, if you've ever taken your wife or somebody into labor ward, then you know what I mean. There's a lot of anxiety. As you took the person to the labor ward, they were screaming in pain. Yeah, they were writhing in pain. And if you took a moment to try and listen in to what was happening inside the labor ward. Well, I have. I've even been inside one while action is going on. <laughs> yeah. But if you listened at the door, you'd hear the kind of screams. Hey, you don't know what's going on inside there. Are people getting murdered? No. People are in labor. The nation called Kenya is officially now in labor. Folks, Labor is also a dangerous time. Yeah, there are instances where the mother does not come out of the labor ward. Yeah, they leave the earth. And there are the instances where the mother comes out. Yeah, but she's not a mother. She doesn't come out with the baby. The baby does not survive. The long and short of what I'm trying to say is that the outcome, yeah, you hope for the best when you send somebody into a labor ward. But the outcome is unpredictable. I firmly believe that Kenyans realize this and that is why they're scrambling all over the place for prophecies <laughs> to be able to get an idea of what is going to happen next. Yeah, what are the outcome yeah, from that labor ward 
will be? Will it be a brand new Kenya which you all desire? Or will the whole thing go horribly wrong? Yeah, because both options are on the table. They are always on the table. Now, the first question I'd like to tackle, yeah, because I've received a lot of uh, feedback from the previous video, yeah, the first question I'd like to tackle is what is Kabogo really up to? Yeah, and are we uh, bound to see a lot of other Kabogos going forward? Now, most of the people on this channel are very alert. Yeah, they listen to a video, they know exactly what I've said. But there are very many others who <laughs> have a problem understanding. The most recent example is a previous video I did on William Kabogo, the former Kembu governor. What I did on that video is that I gave you various scenarios. Yeah, then at the end I said, it remains a deep mystery. Yeah? But some people got it wrongly. I, had, uh, I saw in the comments some people saying, Chris, you're wrong. Yeah, and you're going to be ashamed yeah, with this analysis. <laughs> Which analysis? What is it that I said about Bonacabogo that I'll be ashamed of later? Because according to me, I didn't say anything. What I did is that I gave you various possible scenarios. Yeah, I didn't write anything uh, in stone. And I believe my conclusion confirmed it. Because I said this Kabogo thing remains a mystery. Yeah, it could go either way. Either he's still in the Uru camp or maybe has uh, moved to the Ruto camp. But clearly, that was too complex for some people here to comprehend. Yeah, which is okay. We are not all the same. We don't have the same intelligence levels. I get that and I appreciate that. Anyway, to help us understand Bwanakabogo's motivation, there's a very important nagging question. Is William Kabogo broke or is he not broke? Are things okay with him financially or are they not? Well, the true answer to that question is highly sensitive. Yeah, and I cover it in my latest Sensitive Club 1999 video. You can see the details on your screen on how to join Club 1999. And I guarantee you the answer is not what you expect. I guarantee you the answer will shock you. Yeah, and give us pointers as to what his motive was. Now, going forward, yeah, let's put the Kabogo issue aside for a minute. Going forward, do we expect people to jump camp because of finances? I think the answer is yes. And I believe this will happen in both camps. And therefore, going forward, I think it is prudent that whenever any major defection happens, yeah, on either side of the political divide, it will be prudent to ask the question, what are the finances of this person who has behaved in this way? Yeah, I believe that will be, <laughs> that will be a very important clue to answer the mystery. Now in part two of this video, we will answer the burning question, who is going to be arrested over the dam scandal? Because you can be sure people are going to be arrested. But who, especially which big fish, which big heavyweights are going to be arrested over the dam scandal? So make sure you don't miss part two of this video.